I want to talk about a more advanced way for glazing or a more particular way for glazing, and that is doing a local glaze. So the difference between this versus just glazing in general is that you're going to only be glazing a small area within the entire painting. In this case, I'm going to actually be glazing individual parts of the face. And there's two main reasons that you're going to actually do this. You're either going to be creating a sfumato effect, which means that the objects are kind of blending together. For example, creating a softer edge and allowing for some of that atmosphere to be blending from the foreground into the background. That creates sfumato or fuzzy edges. That's gonna make it look more alive. It's gonna make the painting look like it's all one piece, like you're actually seeing the atmosphere and like that object is actually within the space. The second reason is to change the contrast. So usually you're gonna be doing this in a way that's going to actually increase the contrast in a particular area. So in the nose, in the mouth, in the eyes, for example, those are all areas that you would want to actually use a local glaze to make them more warm or to perhaps add more contrast, whether that's light and dark or just color. As always, you wanna make sure you have a good surface to work on. So I'm gonna use a palette knife in this case. This canvas isn't necessarily the best and it's the first layer. So that's why I'm opting for the palette knife. We're just gonna scrape away this thicker paint. There's really just two good ways to actually apply the paint. So either using a brush and you're going to put it on pretty much like usual or using your finger. And if you use a finger, you can be a lot more delicate so that comes in handy if you're gonna be using pure color or let's say you want to increase a lot of one color's saturation in a particular area. If you want even more in-depth videos to ask me questions directly, any kind of one-on-one -on -one lessons, you can join my Patreon community. I'll leave the link in the description. The easiest way really to achieve Sumato is to just basically blend together the background and the foreground. Wherever the edge is created is what we're trying to diffuse, it's what we're trying to cover up. So if, for example, I wanted to blend together the hair in the background and I wanted to make that more diffused, then I would be choosing one of those colors. Typically for portraits, the eyes are gonna be the focus and we want to actually see the eyes and we want those to stand out more. So it's smart to allow this area to become lower contrast and more diffused. So I'm gonna test this color to see how close it is yeah, that's, that's basically the same as what's on the chin right there. I could add a little bit more gray to it, make it just a little bit darker, so that way we get more of that beard color. Just like that, you can see it's basically the same as the beard. It's perhaps a little bit colder, but for my purposes right now, that's totally fine, I don't care. I'm gonna go over both these edges. And you can see I'm just totally covering it up, basically with complete disregard. And I can go over it even on this side, right here where that black is, maybe I want to cover some of that up. I can get more accurate color for that area. So I'm gonna bring in some of more of that beard color. I'm gonna allow that to blend together with the hair. Okay, now I'm going to use a rag. So I applied a lot and that's because I want to have some options. I want to be able to use my rag selectively and choose how much of this I'm going to remove and how much I want to stay. I can even take some more of that beard color or some more of that brown. I can, I can go back over this. I can reshape the edge right now if I want to, I can come over this and I could actually just kind of leave it like this. That can be helpful in certain areas, but in this case, I'm gonna take my rag, I'm gonna go back over this. So this is going to allow me to choose how sharp I want that to be. So here in the chin, pretty much just gonna pull some of this stuff away. Start to reveal that edge. Down here, I want to blend this around a little bit to make that neck more soft. I'm gonna come back up so you can see that, that right there, that line is starting to show through. I could actually get that line to show again. So right here on the edge, I want a little bit of that defined so I can just leave just a little bit and let it come, come back down here. Maybe right here when it comes around the corner again, we're gonna let a little bit more show. Now if I take too much, I can always just go right back over that. I can bring some more of this beard color in and I can push that edge back out. So it's very flexible and you can see it, it creates a sort of fogginess. It's almost like there's something in the atmosphere or like these are kind of blending together. So very often when I'm actually painting edges, I'm allowing for this to happen by the colors that I choose on my palette. So I'm just allowing them to blend together. I'm choosing colors that are very similar, things that are not going to have high contrast, even if there is separation, like you can see up here in the hair. 
there's not very big difference between the hair and the background. The main thing that I did to create that separation is to just make the background a little bit cooler, maybe a tiny bit darker, but really the big separator here is the warmth and getting some of these crucial points where I apply the paint more directly and more sharply. So I can even do this again right now. I can come back over and I can just keep doing this as much as I need to. I can remove it, I can put it back on, and I can just keep doing that until I'm satisfied with the shape. So if I need to reshape this chin, if I need to reshape any of the parts of the face, I could do this. And it's going to allow me to do it in a way that's not gonna create a very disturbing feature or a disturbing effect. Instead, we're gonna do it softly and we're gonna allow that edge to disappear. So that way it all becomes one object, it becomes a sort of totality. So I'm gonna go back over here. And you can see I'm not, I'm not pressing very hard, I'm just allowing these to blend in both directions. So this is the edge that we had before, and now it's become much softer. I need to sharpen this up a little bit and get some of that beard color in there. So I can just add a little bit of an edge right here. And I need some more light on this side. So this is another thing you can do. You can start to change those colors and you can allow this to happen very softly. So I'm just barely dipping back into these other colors and that's gonna allow me to maintain the soft edge while it redefining the shapes or changing what I'm actually showing here. So now I want to add a little bit more light onto that chin. So I'll just do that. One, some right in here, there, a little bit into the beard. So now you can see this, this whole area has become much softer. It's kind of just fading down, which is gonna allow us to focus up here. It's gonna draw us up towards the eyes. There's not such a point of interest here. There's not so much contrast. Nothing is so sharply defined. So we're gonna naturally gravitate up here where we have higher contrast and I'm going to start to develop those eyes, make the eyes sharper. So that really created the effect that I was looking for. You can see the, the chin has just, overall it's become a little bit more gray, a little bit more dull, there's not so much contrast and that's really what we're looking for. If you look at Carrier and you start to study some of those shadows and what's going on, how does he create those soft effects? A lot of it is just allowing for two different objects where we are going to get an edge. He allows them to blend together. If we have just a little bit, just a little tiny bit of separation, a little tiny bit of definition, our mind is gonna put that together. We're gonna understand, oh yeah, that's the chin, that's the neck, or here's the hair, that's the background. You don't have to have extreme differences. We're gonna be able to see it even though it's very, very delicately defined. This is a pretty easy way of getting that local glaze. Another easy way is to use your finger. So if I want to soften up this part right here, I can, I can take some of this hair color or some of that face color, which, whichever one I want to work with, and I can start to blend that using my finger. So I'll just dip directly in here into something that's a little bit in between the two. It's more of the hair color, and I'm just gonna go right on top of this. So I'll show you, here's, here's my finger. Just got it on the tip there. I can press and I can leave it like that. So I can actually paint using my finger or I can use this sort of residual paint or thin paint that's on my finger. And I can just delicately, I can just go like this. I'm just barely allowing the tip to touch in there and it's gonna blend very, very softly. And you're almost not even gonna recognize that I'm doing it until I get up into this part. So, so this part where I just added more, I can push that up. And now we've, we've softened that up. If I use too much paint, just like always, you know, go back over it with your rag. There we go, it's back to that darker black. And this part, I can start to blend more into that hair color. I can just come over with my finger like that. Now we've got a pretty nice edge there. I can go the other way as well. So if I take some of this skin tone in here, you can see that's basically the same as what I have in the face. And I just push that over into that. I can also do the same thing here in the contour. So if I want to soften this up a little bit, like right here, we're getting this weird, this weird line. That was just something from the, from the turp that I was mixing, I suppose. So I just blend into that using my finger. It's just allowing me to kind of push into it. I can soften up this whole contour line. And just like that, that became a lot softer. So that's still just creating a sort of sfumato. The second way that I'm really going to be using a local glaze 
is to increase the contrast. Now, I'm basically, you know, if for any edge or anything like that, I can just use a higher contrast color. Let's say I want to create more of an edge here. Well, I can bring in some of that darker brown and I can, I can just, you know, blend it out through here. And now this whole area down here just became darker. That's not really what I want. So I'm gonna blend that back a little bit. The more common way and the way that I'm actually going to use this most often is going to be if I want to add more saturation, I want to add more color to an area. So not necessarily just making it lighter or darker, but actually adding a higher saturation. I want to make something more vibrant, something, something like the nose, for example. I can go straight onto that with some red and I can make it glow, I can make it look much more alive. I'm using some red, I'm mixing in a little bit of white so we get a little bit of pink. And this is gonna work great either for the nose or for the mouth. So right here, right on the tip of the nose, that's usually gonna be a warmer area. So I'm just gonna spread the pink, get some of that on there. And you can see now the, the tip of the nose just became a lot warmer, it became a lot more pink or red. And we can do the same thing with the lips. So right in here, let's say I want to add some of that, then we can, we can do that. And it's gonna make it warmer. We can at the same time, you know, create the edges however we want. We can change the edges however we want. That was a little bit too pink, but you get the point. The cheeks are another area. You might wanna get some of that, that warm pink. So we're gonna put some of that in there. And you can see it's just, you know, changing, changing the color here. To be even more extreme, in many areas I'm going to use orange so I can just take some orange and I can go straight over it like this. I can take that into the nose. The nose is always going to be very warm. If it's too extreme, you can always remove it. You can add in more color. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna add a little bit more color. We're gonna remove it and see how it turns out. And you can do the same with the shadows, of course, as well. So I can just blend this up and make those shadows a little bit darker, a little bit warmer. Or I can also go back in with a lighter color and I can soften those up. So I can just go right back over the top or I can wipe away. This is very flexible and that's really the whole point is to be very flexible to allow for you know, the layers to build up. That's, that's really what we're looking for here. And if you're going to add some particular colors, if you're going to make a particular area more warm, you're gonna make it more sharp, you should have a purpose, you should have a reason for it. So here in the nose, obviously that's a very warm area that's full of blood. We've got lots of blood right in there. So that's a natural area that you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of that. Same with the lips, same with the eyes. So those are the areas where you need to have that contrast, where you need to have that color. And if you don't have it, you know, you don't need to spend a lot of time mixing your color, trying to match this perfectly. You can just come right back on top and ex exactly add whatever you need. So if you need to have more of that orange in the nose, you know, don't spend your time blending. Instead, just, you know, get into some of that orange and add more orange directly. And then you can pull it back out and, and remove it and choose in that way. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you an idea about how you can use local glazing, how you can apply these glazes. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.